Hey guys, Matthew here from the MMAT YouTube channel. Here today to talk to you a little bit about the Stevens 300F short barreled rifle. You may remember this rifle from my other video. I think it's called Shooting a Gong at 200 Yards with a 22. Um, in that video, this rifle had a scope on it and uh, I did not yet have the aftermarket peep sights that you see here. So this is actually pretty close to what I see when I'm uh, using the rifle with the peep sights. Uh, as you can see, the rear sight ghosts out very nicely, uh, leaving a nice big hole that you can see the front sight in. You simply center that and pull the trigger. It's that simple. Now from the factory, the rifle comes with your standard uh, notch rear and uh, post front sight. Um, and it also comes with uh, holes drilled and tapped into the receiver for scopes. Uh, and like you saw in my uh, previous video, um, I did have a scope installed on the rifle at that time. Um, what I found though with this rifle is that it's designed to be kind of a lightweight hiking, kind of tramping through the woods kind of gun. And I kind of felt that putting a, a heavy scope on the top of it was kind of counterintuitive to the, uh, the design and the function of the rifle. So I decided that I'd be sticking with iron sights. The issue was the iron sights on this rifle are abysmal at best. Um, as you can see, the distance between where the front sight is and where the rear sight goes uh, it's, it's about 8 inches and that sort of sight radius just simply does not lend itself to uh, inherent accurate shooting. So what I did was, is I put on a rear sight uh, farther back, a peep sight. And this peep sight is actually the same one that's used on the Savage Cub uh, rifle that you can get for children. Now the Savage Cub has a 16 inch barrel and that combined with uh, maybe the taper of this barrel and uh, some other factors that I'm not even aware of the front sight that came uh, with the rear sight that was designed for the Cub was not tall enough so what I did was I put my own front sight on and as you can see um, I had to use this little doohickey thing that uh, slides into the dovetail and then the front sight ramp screws into that and then your front sight itself, the fiber optic, slides into the ramp. Now the rear sight, like I said, comes from Savage but it looks to me like it's designed by Williams. Um, the, the way that it's set up, it has a set screw in the top of the uh, where the dovetail goes so that it, uh, it slides in rather loose actually and then you use a uh, screwdriver to tighten that screw down and that uh, puts tension on it and allows it to uh, sit nice and snug on your receiver. Also uh, you can uh, you can see the screw there for the adjustment of the elevation um, and the aperture itself is also uh, a dovetail construction and it also has a screw, a set screw that you can slide that back and forth to uh, to adjust for windage and I have that in and locked down as well. So as you can see the rear sight is installed by way of a dovetail so um, unless you're a gunsmith yourself, you will have to send that off to get that installed properly. I cannot recommend enough uh, the sights at this setup. It, it stretches your, your sight radius to 18 inches. That is 10 inches more than the 8 inches you get with, uh, with the factory sights. Now a little note, uh, some of you may have noticed that there's a, a tie strap or a zip tie here uh, filling the gap of the uh, original factory dovetail for the rear sight. It, uh, it allows stuff to slide across there without falling into uh, the dovetail and catching. Um, I would namely say clothing. I did some accuracy testing both with and without the uh, strap and there was no noticeable difference in accuracy so it's simply there like I said as a snag uh, resistant uh, device. Uh, with the exception of where the barrel and strap touch the the side of the uh, stock there, the rest of the barrel is 100% free floated. Um, the, the barrel does not touch anywhere else. So uh, it, uh, I don't know if, if uh, that lends to its inherent accuracy or not, but I can tell you this is one heck of an accurate rifle. So the rifle comes with uh, one magazine, it's a 10 round, and this is actually not the one that came with the rifle. The one that came with the rifle I smashed with a hammer um, out, of, uh, out of frustration because it was a piece of junk. It did not feed the last round ever, 
and very often misfed the other rounds. So I bought this and uh, I did some modifications that I found online including doubling up the spring inside so that it now has two springs uh, under the follower not just one and I bent the the front end of the spring in such a way to encourage the the follower to stay nose high to allow the rounds to feed properly. Um, yeah, that was all for absolutely nothing because this is also a piece of crap magazine and does not feed the rounds reliably at all either. The last round often uh, dives and uh, deforms the, the nose of the bullet as it smashes into uh, the bottom part of the chamber. It does not uh, feed reliably at all and uh, I have a feeling that if I did not uh, want to keep this for parts it too would find um, itself in the path of the wrath of my hammer. So, junk. I do not know what it is with the 10 round magazines but they do not work. Uh, maybe you have better luck. Maybe I simply got two lemons. That could happen, I'm sure. Um, that being said, I have a five round magazine here and it feeds flawlessly. No issues whatsoever. Every round, in and out, clickety clack, just slick as snot. It's, uh, it's great. And the other nice thing about it is it looks much nicer in the rifle. While the five round magazine is not exactly flush, um, it is quite a bit lower profile much more comfortable to carry and like I said the simple fact that it's reliable every single shot I'm quite happy with five rounds at a time this is a, a plinking uh, slash uh, you know small game hunting rifle I don't need um, you know ten or more rounds to to take out a rabbit or a, a partridge or whatever that I may be hunting um, five rounds is definitely enough for what I use it for and <laughs> to be quite honest it does uh, help slow down my consumption of, uh, of ammunition, so that's actually kind of a, a cost savings measure for me, if you will. So when I first saw this rifle, uh, it was on Canadian Gun Nuts actually, when uh, the news broke they were going to be uh, available in Canada, um, I was thinking to myself when I looked at those pictures, that is an awfully short rifle. And when it arrived, I was somewhat disappointed that it was actually quite a bit bigger than it seemed online. Now you can see I have a 1022 in comparison there. Now this 1022 has a 16 inch barrel, not a, an 18 inch barrel that uh, they normally come with. This is a, a compact barrel on a on a regular rifle. Um, you can see it's it's not that much longer. I have the trigger guards lined up and the buttstocks lined up and you have a difference of about two inches maybe. The reason that the, the difference in length isn't that big is because the action on the Savage is, uh, is quite a bit longer than the action on the 1022. So for my American listeners, this rifle is actually not even available to you in the United States. Uh, at 13 inches, it is too short to, uh, to be sold unrestricted. Uh, you would have to pay a $200 tax stamp to, uh, to be able to own a short barreled rifle of this nature. And I believe what Savage decided is simply that nobody was going to buy a $200 rifle and then pay another $200 just to own it. So aside from the abysmal factory sights and the, uh, the slightly heavy trigger pull, the only other gripe that I have about this rifle is the position of the safety. Um, if I was left-handed, it would be absolutely perfect because my left hand on the rifle, my thumb doesn't have to go very far, just goes up, flicks the safety off, and I'm ready to shoot. But as a right-handed shooter, as is the majority of the population, your right hand, in order to flick the safety off, you actually have to pull your thumb around the receiver, flick it off, and then go back into shooting position. Anyway, that in a nutshell is the Stevens 300F. Thank you for watching, and I'm going to leave you with some clips of me shooting it. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So how you doing?
Yeah, gum really good actually. I, I actually